So let's take a look at the updated schedule um, for the end of the semester. So uh, we just finished the week 10 pattern lessons. Um, and next this week we'll be going over uh, adding keyboard interaction and sound. Um, so this will be kind of similar to a lot of stuff we've done with the mouse interaction as well as the uh, image assets. Uh, we'll kind of go over how to use the keyboard and how to use sounds in our sketches. Next week we'll, we'll uh, learn more about interaction. We'll also learn a new programming concept functions and we'll kind of put those together into two assignments which I hope will be fun and uh, won't take up a ton of time. They'll be a lot less complicated than the loop ones that we did last week. Um, so that's a keyboard sampler where you make sounds with the keyboard and then a visual sound sampler where we click on things to make sounds. Um, after that, we'll have a week to work on the final proposal. Um, I'll go over how that's going to look, but essentially, if you want to start thinking about that, you can think about um, which of the four projects that we'll have done uh, were kind of the most interesting to you. And if you want to continue with one of those projects and just make a more elaborate version, um, or you can make a hybrid of multiple projects, um, another thing to think about is whether or not you want to work in groups. So you do have the option of working uh, with a group. Um, you don't need to work with a group, but if you are interested in working with a group, uh, that is an option that's available to you. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that will work uh, with the distance learning, but I've always offered that option in the past, so I want to continue to offer that option. If you are interested in working in a group, just let me know. Um, and we'll figure out a way to facilitate communication uh, between the group members. Um, one thing that I will mention since uh, this has been an issue in the past is that if you want to work in a group, you need to tell me that before uh, you show the final proposal. If you uh, do the final proposal, you cannot form a group afterwards. Um, so you can't uh, kind of show up at the end and say we're a group now. Um, that, that will not work. So if you want to be a group, you need to tell me that before you turn in your proposal for your final. Um, so I'm gonna get started here. So this week we're gonna look at keyboard and sound. Uh, I'm actually gonna do sound first, even though I have it second here. Um, so I'll do that in this first video, uh, and then we'll do the keyboard interaction in the second video. Um, so I'm gonna keep the notes open, but I'm also gonna be applying this to a new project. Um, so let's open up sound. Uh, and there's a few things that we have to get, go over here, um, but I want to also have a project open so that we can see how this works with one of our projects. So I'm going to open up GitHub uh, as usual and go to MMP210, and I'm just going to click Open in Sublime Text, and here we go. So here's our MMP210 folder with all of our projects, uh, and I'm also going to go to Show and Finder, uh, so here's my MMP210 folder on the Finder. Um, this is a new project, so we're not really going to be working with any of the stuff that we've been doing recently. Um, so I just need to make sure I have a copy of um, some of the basic stuff. Um, so I'm going to make a new folder uh, for sound. And I'm just going to throw in, um, I'll use the most recent one, so I'll use the index, the p5, and the style.css. So I'm just going to select those hit command copy, go to sound, and command paste. Um, and we're actually going to have to add some more stuff in there, but I'll get into that in a second once we're done with the setup. Um, so I'm going to go back to Sublime Text and open up my landing page or my projects page. Um, so I'm going to make a new line here, and this is just the sound example. Um, so this is without the keyboard elements added to it. Um, so I'm going to make a link here for this example. Uh, so the anchor tag goes to the sound folder. Uh, and we'll just put sound example here. And that's everything we need there. Um, so now that we have a link, let's run our Sublime server. So we'll start the Sublime server and go to localhost 8080. There's my Sublime server. So I'll click on MMP210 and got kind of a lot of examples at this point. Let's go to sound example. Um, so we'll update this page. 
Uh, so let's go to, let's close this out, go to sound and update the index.html to say sound example in the title as well as the h1. And uh, we'll get started from here. So we actually have to add something to the HTML page. So I'm gonna go over that. Um, so in order to play sound in our P5 sketches, we need to add an extra library. Um, so it's relatively easy to do. Uh, there's a couple links in the class notes that you can use. Um, there's a reference here, which shows everything that the sound library does. And then there's also a link to download e the library itself. Um, this looks like a relatively recent version, so that's good. Um, so for this link, when you click on it, depending on what browser you're using, it might just automatically go into your downloads folder, um, or it might open this text version. So if you see open this text version in the browser, you can just hit Command S, um, or you can go to File and Save. Um, so I'm going to hit Command S, and you can see this is called p5.sound.js. So it looks like our other p5 library. I'm just going to go to my desktop and go to my sound folder and just save it in there. Okay, if it doesn't, if it goes automatically to your downloads folder, which might happen, um, just go uh, to the Finder um, or in Windows, the File Explorer. And if you just open a new window and go to Downloads, you'll see it in here. Um, so it might like look like that. And we just need to drag it over to the sound folder. Um, so ultimately when you're done, what you should see in your sound folder is just the index.html, p5.min.js, p5.sound.js, and then the style. And we haven't created this sketch yet. So this is some new code that will allow us to use sound in our project. Um, and we have to make sure to add it in the right place. So you can see that here. We have to add it after p5 because it uses a lot of P5 code in it. And then we have to use it before sketch.js because our sketch file will be referencing the sound file. Um, so let's do that in our HTML right now. I'm gonna add a new script tag. Source is p5.sound.js. And we'll just close that script tag and save that. And so that's everything we need to do with our HTML. That's going to allow us to use the sound functions to uh, play sounds. Um, so now we can actually get some sounds to use in our sketch um, before we actually write the code. Uh, so there's a few different resources on here. There's a lot of stuff on the web that you can use. Um, one thing that I would look for are Creative Commons or other types of licenses that allow you to use the sound for free. Um, if you don't uh, have a Creative Commons license on a project, you probably won't get in trouble just because it's a student project, but um, it is technically not a great thing to publish publicly, which is what we're doing with our GitHub site. So I would avoid that if you can. Um, so one of the good resources for getting sounds is freesound.org. Um, this site is completely free. Uh, it's mostly, uh, it looks like they had their birthday. Um, you can see it's Creative Commons here. Um, it's, uh, the only thing is you have to have a, a registration to download a sound, so I can listen to some sounds. So let's listen to this, um, let's see. So that's the uh, random sound of the day. Um, and so we can search sounds here as well. So uh, we can search for uh, maybe uh, some, well, I already have birds chirping here, so we could see that. So you can see examples of birds chirping. Okay, so that's pretty exciting. Um, so I can look at this file and I can see, you know, what type of file it is, how big it is, some information about the recording. And then if I want to download it, I need to log in. So you can register. Again, it's free. You just need an email. I'm going to log in. Uh, my information is saved, um, and then I'm just going to click download. And so that'll download a, f a file to my downloads folder. So um, usually I'm going to make this finder window a bit smaller. So there's my sound folder, and then I'm going to open my downloads folder over here. And so you can see the sound there. It has a very long name. Um, so you might want to change that. I'm going to just change the name to... 
uh, birds dot wave. Um, and you can see some other information about the sound. Uh, it's about five seconds long, which is quite short. Um, and it's a WAV file, which uh, is going to be larger than an MP3 file. So you might remember some of your sound uh, file formats from MMP100. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it, but one general rule of thumb is a WAV file is a larger file with a better sound quality, and an MP3 file is a smaller file uh, with lower quality. So MP3 is actually probably better for our projects in general because it's just going to be easier to work with since it's a smaller uh, file size. Um, but either one is probably good. If you do see a file that's like 100 megabytes or you know 50 megabytes or anything really over like maybe, uh, I don't know, 10 megabytes, it's probably not the best one to use. Um, but there's a lot of different ways that you can make this file smaller. So if you do have a sound that you really want to use that's too large, uh, we could maybe go over some different ways to make it smaller um, in another session. So I'm just going to grab this birds.wave and put it in a sound folder. So just like images that we used with our memes, sounds are treated as external files. So we're going to have to have them in the folder and then we'll preload them later. Um, so I have a nice bird sound. So that's freesound.org. There's a lot of great stuff there. Uh, it's mostly like hobbyists just recording sounds for fun. But you can find a lot of different things in there. Um, another resource is the Free Music Archive. What I would do is go to the Search FMA here. And then you can find music here. So uh, if you look at genres, you can choose a genre. Uh, maybe we'll choose, uh, let's see, let's try uh, electronic. And then you can look at different songs. And so these are all Creative Commons. As it says, it's Free Music Archive. So you're allowed to download and use these songs for free. Um, so let's see, let's choose a song. Uh, it's not my favorite. Let's see if there's any others. But I found a track that I like, which is this uh, electronic chip music track, which sounds kind of like uh, uh, so it sounds a bit like video game music. So let's see. So when I click on the download link, uh, it's going to take me to the, the file itself, and I can click there and then go to download. Uh, this may change depending on what browser you're on. Um, but you should be able to eventually get the file into your downloads folder on the different browsers. If you have any issues with that, let me know and we can, uh, we can do a screencast to take a look. So now I'll have some music. So I have my birds over here. And then I have some music down here. Um, so I'm going to rename this song, uh, just so I don't really want to type all that out, although I guess I could just copy and paste. So um, I'm just going to drag this over here. And so this one's an MP3, and it's a little bit bigger file size, but it's much longer. It's 2 minutes and 50 seconds versus the 5 seconds for the bird. So um, that's pretty decent for an MP3, 6.8 megabytes for a 3-minute song. It's not too bad. Um, so I'm, I'm good with these as my uh, starting points. Um, so that's the free music archive. There's a lot of different stuff on here, so you could uh, look around for different things and get something that you like. So let's close that. Um, another place where you can make some uh, good sounds is this tool JFXer, um, which is a uh, basically a sound effects tool um, that's used for uh, sort of retro sounds for video games. So um, you can play different sounds. Um, 
Um, so that's kind of fun. And you can also play with the different settings on the sounds and uh, get some interesting stuff here. Um, if this is something you're interested in, you can really uh, spend a lot of time kind of playing around with this stuff, but I won't go into it too deep here. Um, so if you're into games and you might want to work with some video game type sounds, this is a good place to start. Um, so those are all free resources for creating sound or getting music. Um, if you have any questions about any of those, uh, we can go over them more specifically individually. Uh, but for now, I've got a couple sounds, so I'm going to go. I'm going to move on to adding those sounds into my project. Um, so we have the sounds. We have it in our folder with everything else, and so now we are going to preload the sounds, just like we would preload. Um, a a uh, image. So I have this example here. Uh, this will play a sound. So that's one of the JS JFXer sounds. So let's add our birds sound to our sketch. So um, we need to create sketch.js. So I'm going to close index.html and make a new file and save this. So this goes in MMP210 in sound. And I'm going to save this as sketch.js. Uh, and I'm going to always start with my comment. So this is the sound example. And uh, let's see, the date is the 15th. Oops. And since we are going to preload the sounds, you probably already guessed that we need to uh, create some variables for them. So let's start with our birds. I'm going to create a variable and just call it bird sound and just put a semicolon there. So I'm declaring it in the global scope. Okay, so these are our global sound variables. Um, I'm declaring it in the global scope because I'm going to preload it, but then I'm going to play the sound in a different function. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create my setup function. So I'll say function setup, create my canvas. Well, whoops, actually, let's do preload first. So to get my external file, I need to use the preload so it won't try to play anything before the data is loaded. So I'll say uh, function preload. And I'm just going to load the bird sound. So uh, I just need to say bird sound gets load sound. It's just like load image. And then we put a path to where the bird sound is, which is right in our folder. So we just can put the name of the file, birds.wave. Whoops. And so that will load the sound for us, and it'll wait until the sound is loaded before uh, we call the setup function. Let's go to function setup and create our canvas. So we'll say create canvas. And we'll do 640 by 360 as usual. Uh, and then to play our sound, uh, we're just going to use the mouse pressed function. So I'm going to say, uh, I'll, I'll use the draw function just to create a background. So we want to be able to see where our canvas is. Uh, but just as an example, I'm going to use the mouse pressed function to play the bird sound. So we don't actually want to play it in setup or draw. Um, if we put it in draw, it's just going to be playing over and over again. And that's not what we want. We want to play it at a specific moment. Um, so we're going to create in, uh, a mouse press for that. So I'm going to say function mouse pressed. And to play the sound, it's really easy. We just say bird sound dot play. So none of these functions will work unless you have the sound library. But as long as you have the sound library um, in your index.html and in your folder, this should all work. So let's go reload our sketch and hear that sound. OK, pretty good. And so if we hit play, it'll just play once. If I click a bunch of times, it's going to play it a, a bunch of versions of the sound. So we can actually change that. We'll go over that in a moment. But um, for now, if I click multiple times, you hear the sound being played, multiple uh, versions of the sound get played. OK, so we can actually change the way that works. So if we go to our sound library reference, You can see uh, the play mode function here. Um, and this will change whether the sound is a restart uh, mode or sustain mode. 
So what the default is is sustain. So that's why we hear multiple versions of the birds versus the restart, which will start the, the sound over again. Um, so that might be a little bit hard to hear with our bird sound, but let's give it a try. So I'll just go to my code and I just, I only have to do this once. So I'm going to do it in setup. I'm going to say bird sound dot play mode. And then I'm just going to give it the, uh, the restart mode. So now instead of playing the sound over itself, we'll hear the sound restarting each time I click. So it's a little bit hard to hear with that sound just because there's a big tail at the beginning. Uh, I could actually just edit it real quick. Um, I'm just going to do this real quick just so we can hear that a little bit better. Uh, but this isn't something I expect you to do. Uh, but you could, you might be able to do this. If you've taken MMP 100, you probably used Audacity. Um, so you could probably do everything that I'm doing here. Uh, so let's just put that back in the right place. Okay. Whoops. So I'm just going to overwrite that sound and take out the beginning. So we have two channels. That looks good. Okay. So just a little audacity. Um, I'm not expecting you guys to be able to do that, but you could if, you, if you're familiar with audacity. So now we'll be able to hear it a bit better. So you can hear it kind of restarting each time I click. Um, so that works with our birds. So uh, that's, that's pretty good. So we could either do the sustain if we want to hear it a bunch of times, or we can do uh, the restart if we want it to play uh, to go back to the beginning. Um, so I'll just put a note here uh, that the default is sustain. So if you don't do anything, it'll be sustain. If you change it to restart, but you want it to be sustain later, that's something that you could do. Um, you could maybe assign that to a key press or something like that. Um, so let's keep going. I want to show. Now that we can play a sound, it's pretty simple, but there's a lot we can do to manipulate different sounds. So I'm gonna put that track that we downloaded as kind of our background music, and then I'm gonna use some different interactions to show how we can manipulate the sound. So let's go back, and I'm gonna make another variable, music, and we'll load our music track into there. So I'll say music gets load sound. And then our music track has kind of a long name. So I'm just going to go to the finder and hit enter and hit copy. So I can copy that whole thing rather than um, typing it out and just put MP3 at the end. And so for our music uh, sound, uh, what we can do is uh, we can, well, one simple thing that we can do is just either play or not play the sound. Um, and so, uh, to do that, we can we can still use mouse press, but we can actually uh, look to see whether the sound is playing and then uh, pause or stop the sound um, if it is. So uh, with our music, we can play it and then we can also pause it. So since it's a longer track, um, you know we might want to do that as opposed to the bird sound. Um, so I'm going to load the music here. That looks fine. And so then I'm going to go down to mouse pressed and I'm going to say, when we press the mouse, we're first going to check to see if the music is playing. So we can use a little method to do that. We can say if music dot is playing and that'll just say true if it is playing and false if it's not playing. So if the music is playing, then we can stop or pause the music. So if I say music dot pause, then it will uh, stop, but it'll keep the same place. So when we play it again, it'll start from the from where it left off. So else, if the music is not playing, that means that we want to play the music. So I'll say music.play here. So let's see what pause does, and then we'll try stop as well. So I'm going to reload, and we are still going to hear the bird sound, uh, but you'll also hear the music. <laughs> So when I start hit the mouse first, then the music starts. And when I hit it again, 
our uh, bird sound plays again, but our music pauses. <laughs> So we can see we're playing the bird sound over and over again, whereas the music is pausing and resuming. If I change pause here to music.stop, then it's just gonna stop the music, which means when I hit it again, it'll start from the beginning. So we can do a lot of different stuff to manipulate the music that we're playing as uh, our user is playing with the sketch. So I'll put pause back on and leave music stop. And so we can also add some other stuff based on is music playing. So a really simple way to visualize that is we can just either show the background or show something else. So I could say something like uh, if uh, music dot is playing, maybe we'll just change the background color as just a simple example. So I'll say background is uh, green, and else we'll leave the background the way it is. So that'll kind of go along with our music. So let's see what else we can do with our track. We can change the volume of the track by setting using the set volume function. So we can see that in the reference down here, we can set the volume of the sound so we can increase or decrease the sound. And there's a lot of different ways we could do this. I'm just gonna use the mouse uh, just as a quick reference, uh, but you could use a slider like the user interface that we looked at in the previous lessons um, or you know buttons to increase or decrease. Um, so I'm just gonna use mouse uh, Y uh, as just kind of a quick uh, mapping. So um, in draw, I'll kind of update the volume as it's going so we can see it change. Um, so I'll just say, uh, var um, volume and we'll set that equal to uh, we'll map the mouse position so volume is a scale from 0 to 1 so we'll map 0 on uh, y to height down here on y but we'll map that from 0 to 1 and so we'll get that value so I'm going to map mouse y um, zero to height, so that's the mouse Y range, and then zero to one is our volume range. Um, so if the mouse is closer to the top of the canvas, then the volume will be um, higher. And actually, maybe we can reverse that range so it'll make more sense. If our mouse is up here, then we probably expect the volume to go up versus down here, we would expect it to go down. Um, and then we can visualize that as well. So uh, we can set the volume, so I'll say uh, music.set volume and then I'll give that the volume and we should be able to hear that once I start playing music. So when I lower the Y all the way down, the sound of the music is very low. And when it's up, it's very high. So we can actually visualize that. Um, let's just make like a big rectangle. So I'll say no stroke. And I'll do a fill, uh, maybe white, just to start. And I'll do a rectangle, so I'll say rectangle. And I'll start uh, from 0x and from mouse y, whoops, for the uh, y value, so it'll match what we see. And then width, it'll go all the way across the screen. And then depending on the effect you want, you could either make it the height of the rectangle height, so it's always going below the bottom, or you could do something like 10 if you want to see it as like a as like a volume band. Okay, so now we can see the volume. So it's kind of nice to kind of visualize what's happening with our effects. So if I do it as a band, then you can kind of see it. So that might be a nice way to visualize it as well. So that's the volume. There's a bunch of other stuff that we can play with as well. Um, so I'm gonna keep adding these here. Uh, we obviously, we don't have enough inputs to do all of them, um, but we can see a few different examples and I'll just comment out the ones uh, once we uh, move on. So another thing that we can change is the pan of the audio. Um, hopefully you'll actually be able to hear this because I'm still kind of working with my sound setup for this, but. 
um, we can use the pan and the pan is the left or right stereo image. So uh, you might remember this from MMP 100, but basically most sounds are recorded in stereo um, to mimic the way that people hear with two different ears. That's how we can hear depth and distance and things like that. Um, so with our pan, we'll basically be able to move the audio from the right speaker to the left speaker. If you're wearing headphones, this will be very obvious. If you're listening to the sound on speakers, it may be less obvious. Um, so we can set up some pan. So we can say variable pan. And I'm gonna use the mouse X for this. So I'm gonna map mouse X. So I'm gonna map from uh, zero to width. So across the screen, and then pan goes from negative one to one. So negative one is all the way in the left ear, and positive one is all the way in the right ear. The default, of course, is zero. Um, so we can also, uh, so we can then say music dot uh, pan and give that the pan value, and then we can visualize this as well. So uh, I'll leave the fill and stroke, and I'll just do a rect. So for the pan we'll say uh, mouse X and uh, we'll just do zero for Y and for the width, I'll do 10. So we'll use another kind of band and for the height, we'll do height. So it'll fill up the whole screen. Oops. Okay, so now we have the volume. And right now with the mouse in the middle of the screen, it's evenly distributed between left and right. But Listen as I move from left to right, you'll hear it change. So that's kind of fun. We can change the stereo panning of our sound. Um, so let's keep going. What else can we do besides pan? Um, we can also change the playback rate of the sound, so how fast it's playing back. And you can, can get some really cool effects with this. Um, but you have to be a little bit careful because if you set it to something like zero, it you, you might uh, your computer might not like that. So um, I'm going to comment out the pan for now just to make this a little less confusing. Um, and actually, I'll leave this rectangle here. And I'm just going to uh, use left and right mouse X for the rate. So I'll say variable rate is map mouse X. And so I'm still doing zero for to width for the mouse range. Uh, but from for the pan for the rate, I don't want to play it too slow. Um, so I'm going to set a, a bottom number, a minimum number, maybe 0.5, uh, just to make sure we don't uh, get anything too slow. And then I'll set like two, so twice as fast for the maximum rate. You could play around with these numbers. If you set it to zero, you might uh, it might cause an issue, but um, maybe P5 knows how to deal with that. And so then I'll just say music.rate and then put the rate value in there. And so let's see how that sounds. So if I put it in somewhere like around here, it'll be one. Uh, so we'll hear the, the rate correctly. If I put it over here, it's gonna go twice as fast. And if I put it over here, it's gonna be twice as slow. Um, so you'll hear the difference in the sounds. fun there's a lot of different kinds of effects that you can get with that it also sounds really interesting if you have a singer or a person's voice um, in your in your track as well okay so that's just a little bit that we can do uh, with our sound project um, we'll look at some more stuff uh, next week when we add um, our kind of sound sampler uh, and in the next example, using the keyboard, I'm going to add a few more sounds so we can kind of uh, have a little fun with our sound sampling. So uh, for this, that's it for this example. Um, so I'm just going to uh, go to GitHub and add this. So I'll say adds sound example and commit to master and then push to origin. And so this will be the first part of the video, just covering sound. Uh, and in the next video, 
um, I will go over adding the keyboard input and we'll use sound along with the keyboard.